Hey, this is Chuck Billy from Testament. I'm blowing it up. I'm blowing it up. I'm blowing it up. On Capital Chaos. Capital Chaos TV. Motherfucker. Aftershock with Capital Chaos TV. I'm standing with Spencer and Steven of Sleepwave. We're going to pick their brains, talk about everything that's going on, how hot we are, and how hot they are. <laughs> so, how are you feeling today, man? I am sweaty and exhausted. <laughs> I got a cloud of dust in my lungs, but I'm feeling great. Awesome, yeah. awesome. And you? I'm, I'm generally soupy in the nether regions, <laughs> but I've earned that. We did play hard today, so I'll take it. That's yeah. fine. Right? That's fine. So how do you guys stay cool when you're playing an outside show like this and you're constantly sweating? No, Are you, do you, you stock not. and baby wipes you, you, and water or? Gold bond. Go gold bond <laughs> is your friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gold bond, baby wipes are killer. Water, dude. Like, yes. you know, bands love to drink, but if you got a show like this, you got to know, man, like, you got to drink a ton of water before but, you get yeah. up there. Like our bass player, who's not as weathered as we are, he's mm -hmm. just the higher guy. You know, he's throwing up when we were done for 20 minutes. Oh heat stroke. You know, it's well, like he earned it. You yeah, know, he yeah, earned he it, earned but it. he probably didn't drink enough water for the set. Yeah. You got to you got to force it, man. Like you got to drink no matter how early it is, you gotta get at least a half ga half gallon to a gallon down yeah, for a show. We're like fish out of water, yeah. fish yeah, out of water. Out <laughs> yes. All right. So, Broken Compass, it is out, but releasing on the 16th, and the Wolf is that off that new album, yeah. correct? Yes. Okay. So, watch the video. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Read the lyrics. I love it. In my own perspective, it sounds like a breakup something of a letting go can you maybe yeah. give a little insight it's letting go it's definitely not a breakup it has, okay. it has nothing to do with any female I've ever dated so oh, okay. I don't I don't write about <laughs> I don't write about that I write about deeper shit than that it's more of like a uh, a family struggle and something that was really close to me that really you know like uh, a separation that didn't need to happen that really hurt you know um, I think it, you know it's just more for I don't like to dive too far into it because I don't want it to cheapen what it means to anyone else mm -hmm. but anyone that's felt pain and felt you know that song this whole record is like we say this all the time it's like the seven steps of grieving you know like yes. there's a, a lot happened in my life over the last two years but that song is at that point in the record you're on song four that's the pissed off that's the song where you're where you're not you're, you're saying what you would never say you know what I mean like you're this is like the fight of, of the record you know that's the song where you're just like you know what fuck you you know it's like yeah. it's not what what maybe really I feel on a daily basis towards this situation but that and that song I wrote it from that standpoint like this is the like heated moment you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying I understand. So, so how strongly do you feel that music can be used as a therapeutic tool? That's the whole point. Yeah. It's it's Literally. when you're not Literally. when you're writing about having fun and partying and like that shit's just not so empty to real. me. Like, like we we talk about this in every interview. It's like where are the Lane Staley's? Where are the Trent Reznor's? Where are the Kurt Cobain's? Where are the Maynard's? Where are the Chinos of this modern day? Where's the next wave of those cuz everyone's yeah. writing about like nothing it's so empty to me so to like have some balls like the stuff on that record like I, I'm not it's not something I want you know you don't want your parents to read and your best friends to read because it's like it's really personal deep oh, yeah, stuff it is. It, but you know that's the point of music is you know like it's when, when I grew up on you know like Nine Inch Nails and Nirvana and Soundgar and Alice in Chains those bands mm -hmm. like to me they knew exactly what I was going through like those songs were about right? me they as were a kid literally writing yeah. it to you yeah, yeah. It, and that's not the case whatsoever I bet half those songs are not even what I think they're about mm -hmm. but I was str I was in pain I was struggling I was suffering and so were they and those dudes weren't ashamed to write about it like those dudes were selfish writers mm -hmm. and I think this world needs more selfish writers write about your pain stop breaking some story up that you think everyone's gonna like yeah because who fucking cares like it's it's so empty it's like yeah, are we in honest. are we on Broadway now are we just <laughs> actors are we like models with perfect smiles and abs just yeah. selling a story or are we artists that write from the heart and I just it's so it's missing nowadays and you know I'm not saying we're the saviors of rock and roll, but we'll sure as hell try, you know? Fucking A to that. Uh. 
So if you're having a bad day, dude, what music would you look to to either lift your spirits or give you that kick in the ass of motivation? I, it, For me, weirdly enough, like Tool and Deftones yes. are two artists that regardless of, of what I need at the time and regardless of the content that they might Mm -hmm. or I might source from them, it never fails. Like Deftones especially. Deftones yeah. is one of those bands where it's like, oh, yeah. every time I put Saturday Night Wrist on, my day or evening is better for having listened to it. record that's like about his mom or something, that one's the Enema or something like that. Yeah. Is it yeah. something it is like that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that record is so Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like it lives within and outside of yes. its message. And I think that's, that's a killer thing when you can pull it off. Like, there's moments on our record, not to sound like an asshole for saying this, but there's moments on our record where, you know, sometimes that's what I need to hear. Mm -hmm. And it's weird to make something out of context and then in the future find yourself in a moment where your own work gives you the guidance you needed. But Isn't it's happened to me crazy? twice since the record was finished. Yeah. And, and that means the world to me because it's just for the headiness of it, yep. if not for the you know the value that I reap from it. It's substance, man. It's right. real yeah. substance. It's a beautiful thing. It's it a beautiful is. thing. It is. So working with David Bendith, I understand, was challenging, fun. Is there anything that you'd like to share? Or was it just that it was pushing you to other levels? Or, or what was it like? He's a complete asshole. <laughs> and um, there it is. <laughs> no. I, I love the dude to death. Um, I had a relationship with him from prior. He mixed an Under Oath record of mine mm -hmm. in uh, 2008. And I always I always liked his advice. Like, he busted our asses while we were there, and we should have taken his advice. So when it came time to do this record and he was interested, I was like, let's, let's do it. And, um, you know, he doesn't use shortcuts, which I really, really admire. Like, he doesn't, you know, edit the guitars or drums too much. He doesn't vocal line or melodyne like the mm. dude the dude makes a real record he's you know 60 years old he's old school yeah and i think it made us i've been playing guitar since i was in first grade probably mm -hmm. and i haven't learned as much as i learned on that record in a long time and i could i and second, being, awesome. I second that entirely a, yeah being, totally agree being a singer you know i was singing in choir in middle school and i've never been worked like that you know mm -hmm. i and, you know i've done you know a lot of under oath records and records before that and I've never never been like to where someone like really dove into what I was saying and made me feel it relive it yeah. be in it and, and really and listen I, and I think that it's it's on the record you can really really feel it you know like I think it's there you know it's That's like bad. and I, I can't think the dude enough I, I call him an asshole it's, it's really a joke it's like but if <laughs> you're not it's a term of endearment it, it's, yep. it's not it's a term of endearment if you're not up for the challenge if you're not willing to you know, he pushes you to your limit and then some mm -hmm. as a play. And most, you know, a lot that breaks a lot of people. It and I'm, I'm not saying we're the best, but I'm saying that that dude, if you're not, that's, that's you can bite off more than you're, you can chew if, if you work with someone like that. But he makes what I think some of the best sounding, most, most rocking records. Mm -hmm. I think that dude's killer. And I, I will go back to him. And if some of my friends ask me if they should, I'm like, well, are you are you ready? Like, are you willing? I was just to gonna ask. Ready? I know it's too soon to talk about another album, but if the opportunity presented itself, would you definitely want to do it with him? I'll wipe the floor with Bendis' ass. <laughs> ready? That's a yes. <laughs> I, I, I love him. We talk all the time still. If he watches this, he'll laugh. I'm really not talking crap. I love the. I respect him so much. Like that's rad. Uh, but I do know. I don't. I don't think he's for everyone because I think that, you know. Where I'm a sensitive person, but when it comes to my music, I'm a, a very hard worker, so I can handle it. Mm -hmm. But someone that's just a sensitive person, sensitive about it might not. their music, I don't think they, they can make it through it, because I think that yeah. he'll chew you up and spit you out faster than, you know. There's no room for, for a lot of these bands that use the computers and the shortcuts we have yeah. nowadays to their advantage. If you're a band like that, that relies on these tools to uh, make ends meet and make the performance the way it is, it's you're you're screwed. Yeah. yeah, you're screwed. It's not gonna work. Totally, totally. All right. So, what's going on for the rest of this year and next year? Where are you guys gonna be at? Where can we find you? We've got tours lined up. We've got tons of touring. Mm -hmm. None of which we're allowed to talk about because they're not our tours. They have not been announced yet. All the right. only one we can talk about is going overseas. We're going to the UK. We're doing some stuff with Bring Me the Horizon. I was just gonna yeah. say, yeah, Bringing the yeah. Horizon, and then uh, nothing more this year. We just we, we're on nothing tour with nothing more right okay, now. Right yeah, now. Yeah. yeah we've been okay. we've been out since August 1st with them. Nice. So, yeah, nice. it's been good. It's been a really good run. Yeah. It's been great. They're good dudes and I feel like we 
as far as band on band, we make a good team in that way, and that makes for a good tour, fun tour. Oh, yeah. you know? it, it makes it a lot more funner. It's super cute, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a good shape, you know. <laughs> well, that's always a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to thank you guys for taking the time. Is there anything that you would like to say to your fans or anybody that's uh, going to watch this? Well, the record comes out in a couple of days. Yes. You can stream it, hear it on Spotify, YouTube, whatever. If you like it, try try to buy it because we, we buy are, it we, well i know it's a crazy buy crazy it. concept but you, you know everyone always says you don't make money off of records that's not true like no. being a new band you know your record label is your bank right yes okay so epitaph supports us a hundred percent and we if we can't afford to tour and they can't afford to loan us any more money because no one's buying that record. Mm -hmm. Being a new band, you know, it's like, yeah, some of these bands that are headlining, that you, they're on their fifth or sixth record. Yeah. You don't feel like buying, but if, if not just us, any new band that you like, anything, anything new and fresh, every every dollar you don't spend, it's it's more than likely they're never going to come to your town and probably break up into the year because yeah. it's 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 tough. Like, yeah. like when I started touring with Under Oath, you know. We, that's when people were still buying music. It was easier to tour. Money and gas was cheaper. Mm -hmm. People are actually buying CDs and buying T-shirts. And yeah. you need help from the label. They're there because they're making their money back. Mm -hmm. Now, being a new band, trying to cut through yeah. the crap and just get your head above water enough to where you can tread without drowning, it's really tough. Yes. We've been we've been at it for we've been on tour for the last year and have not made one dollar. You guys hear that? So, they work hard, line, hard work. If you like it, support it, or else it goes away. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That, just just like any it. other venue or business or anything that you love, you, you have, have to continue favorite, to support it. Favorite restaurant serves the best cheeseburger ever. You steal that cheeseburger three times a day until they're like, wow, we, we're losing all our money. We're we gotta, shut, we gotta yeah. shut down. We can't afford to ship these great burgers in from this butcher that we love. We're either gonna start making shitty burgers or we're gonna shut down. Yeah. So yes. it's, it's just logic. I know kids aren't gonna buy it, whatever. <laughs> but it's worth a shot. Yes, it is. Pirate with Capital Chaos here at Ace of Spades, and I am with Joe and Lee of Born of Osiris. Zam Pirate, I am with Capital Chaos. Here I have Wes Borland. From Hi, this is Zam Pirate with Capital Chaos here at the Boardwalk. Here with me, I have Chernabog. Hi, this is Zam Pirate and Capital Chaos, and here at Ace of Spades in Sacramento, I am getting ready to interview the lovely ladies from Cherry Bomb. I have Concordia, and here with me is Dino from Fear Factory, and here with me is Damage Over Time Journal from Sacramento. Who is Killgasm? Obey the Brave. We have Sentinel Beast. Is Brian, and he's from Shadows Fall. Is Max Cavalera from Soulfly? Have Structures. Johnny Plague with Winds of Plague. Have Zach from Whitechapel. Is Jake from the casualties with the word alive is via coma Corey Putman from Norma Jean Jamie Oliver from the Lost Prophet is Scott from Hollywood hate I see stars with 12 stones Fallujah with PK from San Luis Obispo Wing Nate and Chris Avatella Polly from the real McKenzie this is Amber from the uh, the video place <laughs>